All right, I want to wrap up today with a conversation. Uh, Jadeja, can I ask for your assistance here? I'm going to ask you to grab this portable microphone and get ready to bring it around to anybody who wants to talk. I truly would like to make this a conversation. And it's about democratic messaging. Uh, you see headlines like this in the news all the time. Do Democrats have a messaging problem? Yes, Democrats have a messaging problem. The problem with Democrats is messaging. Democrats are losing the messaging war according to Democrats. There is no worse enemy than we have than ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. There is nobody harder on us than ourselves. And if we could just get out of our own damn way sometimes, it'd be amazing what we could accomplish. But I was listening on one of those long drives to another podcast that talked about messaging. And I want you to listen to this minute and a half clip and get your opinion on it. Okay, Sarah. This is Warren from Texas. Uh, here's what I just want to know. I have done everything. I'm a Democrat. I'm very progressive. Black male here in Texas. So no, Ooh. it's rough. But I volunteer with campaigns all over the country, volunteer down in Georgia and Wisconsin. I contribute to political campaigns, all of that stuff. I mean, financially, with my blood, sweat, and tears, with my effort, and, you know, on the phones. Get these Democrats in office, and for what? Nothing, nothing happens when we get in control. So my position is I'm done. I'm not volunteering, I'm not spending my money, I'm not going out to vote, I'm not doing anything because we get in power, there's no voting rights legislation. There's no police reform legislation. There's no, you know, they're taking over this country. They're hijacking this country. We will not get rid of the filibuster. We're gonna let the Republicans ramrod us so why do, why do we go out there and do all this hard work to get them in office and then still nothing happens? Now, tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe I got this, you know, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I'm just tired. Please let me know. All right, that was a clip taken from uh, the Sarah Silverman podcast. She's a comedian, somewhat irreverent, but I'm a big fan of hers, have been for decades, and uh, she has a very good weekly podcast, and that call came on, and that really uh, instilled a, a lot of thought, but I don't want to say my thoughts. I want to hear yours. Is the gentleman on the phone correct? Do who feels the same way? Uh, feel free to, to raise your hand, and we'll bring the microphone over to you. I want to hear what your thoughts on are on that little clip. But yeah, I used, to, I used to feel that way quite a bit. You can hold the microphone. Okay. I used to feel that way a lot. And then I started uh, following um, some of the Democrats like Pelosi and stuff on Facebook and stuff. And she will regularly point out positive stuff. As long as we have a list of positive stuff that we've accomplished, I think that reassures us that we are getting the right people here. And that's what we are doing here. That's what y'all are doing. And I really appreciate you for doing Thank you. That. So one, one piece of advice is maybe follow some positive leaders and get their message, but I think it's also important to share that message. So it's one thing to feel good, pass on that joy, pass on that good info. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, put me guys said is true, it's still better when uh, Sister Mitchell was up speaking, she and Reverend Thompson asked a question about when and why are the young people are not voting. And they have that same mentality as you just heard there. I go to communities all the time asking people to go get registered. You know, your voice does matter, but that mentality comes out. Oh, it don't matter. And, you know, I don't care about it. Ain't nothing going to change. And we really, if we're really passionate, like Searles is about mental health, then we got to be even more passionate about changing that concept of these young people. Um, college students, uh, people who's not involved in politics, really. it's very perfect, it's very real. That attitude, attitude is very perfect, it's very real. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that there is a, uh, 
there's a divide right now in the Democratic Party between corporate Democrats and progressives. Um, over the years, especially the past, I'd say, 10 to 15 years, we've seen progressives start to speak up more and progressives start to stand ground more. Um, and that's caused a rift in the Democratic Party, especially with a lot of corporate Democrats. We see uh, two Democrats particularly, particularly uh, that's kind of holding up a lot of the votes right now in, in, our, in our government. Um, but young people aren't as out of the loop as you think. Uh, a lot of young people trace the money and they go back and they see, well, this person they claim to you know, be for human rights or claim to be a Democrat or whatever, but they're also in service to their donors. They're also in service to these big corporations. And that can cause a lot of apathy. Um, it's hard to get excited and enthused when you know at the end of the day that person is going to go after the, it's going to look out for the person that gives them the money. Mm -hmm. And that's not a, that's not a, a, a bipartisan thing. That's, a, that's, on the, that's on the right and the left. Um, these are the, the, flip, the flip sides of the same coin where you have politicians looking out for their donors, not necessarily their constituents. And young people are aware. And not just young people, I don't know if that guy's young or not that was on that call, but it seems like that apathy, he's starting to realize like, hey, it, 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 at some point it doesn't matter. At some point I can have the most well intentions and vote for the, the person that you know, I, I feel like it's gonna really make change, but if that person got a donor that's throwing money their way, they're gonna look out for that donor. And that's not always the case, but more than likely, and, and especially from what we've seen in today's government, that is the case, whether Republican or Democrat. So while, I and, and I personally uh, consider myself a progressive, um, and I believe that voting is our only way out. We can be upset with the process, we can be upset with the corporate donors, but the only way to change it is voting. So I would never go that far to, to say I wouldn't participate in, in, our, in our system. But do I see why some people choose that? Absolutely. Do I see why young people choose that? Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, unless you got millions of dollars to throw around, it just doesn't matter sometimes. Thank you. Who else? Uh, I think I'd tell that man that we're a work in progress. That we're, that we're a work in progress. Um, that if you, a lot of us have a short attention span. And if you think back a year ago, where we can't were, hear you. If, oh, I'm sorry. I have to be right. Okay. If you look back a year ago, we had administration that didn't believe in science and technology and the environment. Things are changing slowly, but they don't happen overnight. I think sometimes we just want things to happen immediately. Um, and I think that the voting acts will come up next. I've even heard Biden talk about it. You know, let's get through the bill back better. And then the next thing they're going to go through is the voting acts. And I think he, he knows he knows the, uh, the Congress. He's been in the Senate for a long time. And he knows things have to simmer a little bit with people, like with Manchin. He tried to work with the Republicans and tried to get something through and completely flopped. So I think come the next year, I hope, I hope and pray that's, that's the next push, because that is, that is democracy. I, I feel the same way. It's almost, you know, the day after inauguration, there's a, an unrealistic expectation that all of our problems are now fixed. Right. Yeah. You know, not realizing that there is a process, and sometimes that process is lengthy. And you look back, it's only been one year. One year, and I, I do look at what's been accomplished between the American Rescue Plan and the infrastructure bill and, and getting the vaccinations rolled out. There's just a lot of good to celebrate in that one year that people were dying, hospitals were filling up. You gotta take care of that business now. And the voting rights, does anybody know how many times the Voting Rights Act has been brought up to the Senate floor for debate this past year and got rejected by the Republican side? Five, I think, by my count, right? It's not like they're ignoring it. There's just certain rules you have to follow in order to get it down the path. And another thing I think of is that, did the Democrats win? Yes, but barely. 
right? It's not like we've got this super majority where we can ramp through every wish list item. You know, we've got 50 senators and one tiebreaker in Vice President Kamala Harris. That means that if one senator on the Democratic side isn't on board, you don't get to move forward. Now imagine a world, and I wrote this in an email once, imagine a world where Jamie Harrison won that Senate seat. Imagine a world where uh, Susan Collins up in Maine lost to her competitor, uh, or, or any of the other close races throughout the country. Just one more Democratic senator, we'd have that wish list today. That's all it would take. You wouldn't have the one Joe Manchin or Kirsten Cinema obstructing everything. You'd have it. So it's incumbent upon us. It's not the Democrats don't do anything. We are the Democrats, right? We need to be out there pushing harder for Jamie Harrison. In some of our voting precincts that are heavily Democrat, only 50% turned out in 2020. We are the Democrats, and it's our responsibility to get those people uh, elected into office. We can't just put it and hang it on somebody else. The gentleman mentioned about going to Georgia. Thank God he did work for Georgia and got us two Democratic senators. Whatever little we have today is because we got those two in the office for all of those who worked, not just that man. I know some of you did as well. What we have today is because of that. And I don't see that as a cause for discouragement or concern. I see that as a bright ray of hope saying that that can work and we just need to continue that work. If it takes 40 years for the Republicans to tear away at our freedoms, I got 40 years left in me, I hope. I got 40 years, and if not me, then I know my daughter and my son do. Many of you met my daughter a couple of months back when she came up here. All right, we've got it in, our, in ourselves. Anybody else have a comment to make? I want to play another clip. Jill? Well, we should. Yeah, I need you on, on the microphone. I'm sorry, because I can't hear. It's, it's completely obvious, but if uh, Biden had lost, we'd still have Trump as a president. Now, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Don't he, compare me to the almighty. Compare me to the alternative. That's the phrase, right? You know, I think about what that gentleman was saying, and I refer back, and I'm going to need Kerwin's uh, approval that, or agreement with this, that I remember back when Trump won. It was a very sad time. For, it was so discouraging. And I don't want that to happen again. And we just got to persevere. We can't quit. We need to keep That's going right. on. And you know, uh, uh, about meeting the enemy and they are us? Yes, we just have to get by those people. You know, it happens in every organization. You're always going to have dissension or disagreements. But we've got to compromise. We've got to keep going on and keep striving to continue and, and get our initiatives passed. Good point. Now, the following week on that same podcast, another caller came in uh, to, to respond to that gentleman. Can we listen to that? It's just another couple of minutes. All right, so here's the response the following week. Hi, Sarah. I just want to respond to the gentleman from Texas, the black man who called and said he'd been working for Democratic causes and was going to quit and not vote. And first of all, I just want to thank him from the bottom of my heart. As another Democrat, I'm in a different part of the yeah. country in New York. Um, the work that he did helped us to elect a democratic president. And I agree, it is heartbreaking that we don't have reform, uh, police reform, and that we didn't get the Voting Rights Act reform. It is a tragedy and it is horrible. But having a democratic president, I just wanna point out some of the amazing things that we do have, such as um, rejoining the Paris Climate Accords sure. that Trump left, and the World Health Organization, those two things alone have created so much positive change for people. Um, also, I just wanna to say to your caller, um, because of the work he did, we got a child tax credit um, and the American Rescue Plan. We have cut child poverty in half, in half. So yes, it is frustrating and it is terrible that our Congress does nothing, but the work that he did and that has been done to um, improve the lives of people is real. And please vote, <laughs> and please vote Democrat. And uh, I just wanna say thank you and love your show. Thank you so much. You know, and I think that that's it. You know, the, the thing that frustrated me in the last four years with the, re the Republicans would take credit if the sun shined 
They were out there praising that it was because of their policies that the sun came up that day. It was nuts. They would take credit for every little thing that happened, take none of the blame. And the Democrats were out there doing amazing things. It has been a good year, and we don't give ourselves credit. So that lady at the end who was thanking that gentleman and saying, here are the things that have been done, those are the type of messages we need to get out more. And you can help by sharing some of our email newsletters. Send them out, and I'm trying to make sure that every one of them contains positive information. Following us on social media and retweeting and sharing on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and whatnot. Uh, share that information as well. We need to be our biggest boosters. You know, the other side's not gonna do it for us. We need to be more supportive of ourselves. Yeah, comment. I don't know how many of you was here when Obama team was in town. Well, Obama's right here today. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Thank God we have it here. The team that we had at that time, uh, we were very unique. Young people, older people, and I thank God I was on that team at that particular time. Now, what I'm saying to those who felt, feel that they've been let down, I want to say as sister, eat a child, sit around, went around the world, fired up and ready to go. And that lift the spirit of us Democrats. So I want to say to each and every one, fired up and ready to go. Fired up. Ready to go. Thank you to our executive committee, committee man. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny, I, I realized standing up here that I was the oldest person to take stage today. You know how that makes me feel? It makes me feel old. I know, right? Welcome to the club. But that to me is a good sign. The fact that if I'm the oldest one up here, I think there's a ray of hope. All right, well, we're gonna wind down. Um, I'm going to end on a positive note with a message from a previous president, not President Obama, uh, but another president who pointed out some things of what it means to be a Democrat. And I wanna give us three minutes to listen to our former president, uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, at his nomination speech in 1976, before some of us were born, I was alive, but I don't remember that speech. But I want to hear some of his words because they actually resonated with me. Ours is a party of the man who was nominated by those distant conventions and who inspired and restored this nation in its darkest hours, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Ours is a party of a fighting Democrat who showed us that a common man could be an uncommon leader, Harry S. Truman. <laughs> Ours is a party of a brave, young president who called the young at heart, regardless of age, to seek a new frontier of national greatness, John F. Kennedy. And ours is also the party of a great-hearted Texan who took office in a tragic hour and who went on to do more than any other president in this century to advance the cause of human rights, Lyndon Johnson. Now, our party was built 
out of the sweatshops of the old Lower East Side, the dark mills of New Hampshire, the blazing hearths of Illinois, the coal mines of Pennsylvania. The hard scrabble farms of the southern coastal plains and the unlimited frontiers of America. I was as a party that welcomed generations of immigrants. The Jews, the Irish, the Italians, the Poles, and all the others enlisted them in its ranks and fought the political battles that helped bring them into the American mainstream and they have shaped the character of our party. That is our heritage. Our party has not been perfect. We've made mistakes and we've paid for them. But ours is a tradition of leadership and compassion and progress. Our leaders have fought for every piece of progressive legislation from RFD and REA to Social Security and civil rights in times of need the Democrats were there.